So what are my thoughts on it? Is this something that's going to take over developers or is it gonna put us out of a job? Is it gonna put my freelancing career on hold because now companies can build things with no code? What's the deal? Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Don Felker, and for those of you that are unfamiliar with who I am, I'm a software developer and freelancer based in the United States. And on this channel, I help you start, survive, and thrive in the world of freelancing and in the world of software development in general. And today we're gonna talk about a topic that's called no code. And we'll also touch on something that's known as low code. So the topic's really no code and low code. Let's get to it. So this topic actually comes to us from a viewer who asked a question here, is low code or no code something that I should worry about in the software industry and also inside of freelancing? Is it something that's gonna take over the industry and uh, what are my thoughts on it? So I think before we can really hop into that, let's talk about what no code really is. If you've never really heard the word no code before, it's basically a series of tools and platforms and technologies that allow you to build applications with no code, basically nothing at all. So it's a very descriptive word, no code. What's gonna happen is some of these platforms are all inclusive. You can build an entire web app or mobile application just kind of by clicking and dragging different components onto a canvas and connecting things up. And then you, at the end, have a working web application or mobile application. Now, no code also encompasses is the ability to connect multiple different tools together to create a different type of application. So you're integrating a bunch of different tools. And I'm gonna talk about tools at the end and things that you can use to do so. Now the term low code is very similar to no code because low code is just like no code, except you can code a little bit. Some of these platforms do allow you to write a little bit of code that you can perhaps update particular parts of the site or a web application. Maybe you can drop some JavaScript in there and modify a bit here and there or provide a little bit of scripting. However, it's not a full blown programming environment where you can create a brand new application, kind of like you could do in Rails or Python or JavaScript or anything like that. So no code, you're not gonna be writing a line of code at all. These things are very attractive right now because a lot of business users and people who are not technical can take the idea that's in their head and build something in real time just by connecting the dots together. There's a ton of tutorials out there if you're interested in this, which I recommend you do look into. Just go look up no code tutorials and there's a bunch of websites out there that will show you how to build different things with no code technology. And then of course, you're probably gonna touch into various things of low code if you need to do any type of scripting. However, not required, you can completely build an application with no code. So that's what it is. So what are my thoughts on it? Is this something that's going to take over developers or is it gonna put us out of a job? Is it gonna put my freelancing career on hold because now companies can build things with no code? What's the deal? All right, before I answer that question, let's rewind back a number of years to when Microsoft came out with a product called Microsoft Access. If you've been around long enough where you've seen an Access database, Access is basically a database technology that allowed users to build forms on top of a database with certain validation. They could click and drag buttons over and input fields and certain things could be required. There was validation that could be built in and it was just meant as a personal database for kind of personal tasks. And what it ended up turning into as a side effect was People would build these databases internally at companies, they would put them on shared drives, and then they would share the database among different departments and people. And large organizations internally would use these access databases. There's many stories of companies that were running on access to run their entire business. Now, does that mean that database developers or DBAs or just software developers in general were without jobs all of a sudden because Microsoft Access came out, which was technically a no-code solution really, or low-code because you could do a little bit of scripting in there? No, it just meant that the problem moved somewhere else. So there were still developers that were needed to write shell scripts and integrations with backend technologies and custom websites and custom applications and all different types of things. Developers were always needed for cutting edge technologies. It's just that the problem domain had moved somewhere else. It allowed business folks to develop something, test it, provide value, prove a market, prove a concept. And then once they kind of worked out all the details and the bugs, they could then bring in developers and say, hey, this thing I've built in Access is very limited and I like what it does, but I needed to do these 10 other things, but we can't do that in Access. Can we build an application that does that? And at that point, the developers would hop in, take a look at the Access database, model the data correctly, because most likely it wasn't modeled correctly early on, and then build an application around it. So that's how these things happened early on. And the same thing happened and still does happen with tools like Excel. If you look any company that runs with a lot of Excel spreadsheets, that's usually an opportunity that you can find a business opportunity in. If a company is relying heavily on a spreadsheet 
to make any of its business decisions or run anything or calculations. If you can reverse engineer that, you basically have a product on your hand. So that doesn't mean that developers are out of job. It just means that someone is using that tool for a specific use. So these tools that are around nowadays will allow you to build mobile apps. They will allow you to build custom web applications that accept payments, restrict access to content. So a lot of the things that you required developers for before, it's not really needed anymore to do these basic things. But that doesn't mean that developers are not needed Needed. It just means that developers are going to focus on other areas. So that's what the next question really is. Like, where do we go from here? If the no code revolution takes off, which it has already started, what does that mean for developers? Where are they going to move next? Now, it's hard to predict the future in anything because 20 years ago, I was writing shell scripts in Unix and downloading dialer files for automated call systems. And now I'm writing mobile applications and web applications. However, one thing has remained constant in the last 20 years. I've been writing web applications. It's just the underlying technology has changed. It went from static HTML and CSS, which is all we really had at the time, into CG CGI scripts into classic ASP to ASP.NET, PHP, Rails, you name it. There's a ton of different frameworks out there that allow you to build web applications and they're only getting better and better and better. And as more components come around, it just enables me to build faster and faster. It allows me to focus on different problems when before it might've taken me a month or two to get to a particular feature or a problem area in an application. I might be able to get to it in a few hours or a few days. It just makes me more effective because a lot of these tools are doing things for me already. And the same thing with the no code revolution. Someone's going to build a web application with these different no code applications, all these integrations together, and they're going to get to a point where they need it to do something special and it can't do it. It's just beyond the scope of what's available and what's possible out there in the various no code solutions. Now, again, there might be another no code solution that's built to handle that. Okay, that's fine. But most likely what's going to happen is the business owner has an opportunity. They need to capitalize on it immediately. What are they going to do? They're going to go out and find find someone who can help solve that problem. And that problem solver is going to be a developer. And they're gonna reach out to you or somebody else to say, hey, here's our app. It's a no code app, but I need it to integrate with this thing over here. Now you may be able to figure out a way to leave that entire application a no code app, and then just perhaps send off a webhook somewhere and you intercept it and then build that integration for them. Or you might realize that they are literally on the brink of disaster because everything's just teetering on this no code solution that just needs to be either rebuilt or built from the ground up or simply customized in certain areas to handle their business needs. So as a developer, your focuses are just gonna shift. And even if everything does become automated, we just build websites going forward with no code. What does that mean? Well, it just means we're gonna focus on different things. 30, 40 years ago, there were Fortran developers. There were just punch cards. There was all kinds of stuff where people were building software back then. Those things don't exist anymore, but there's still, still, tons of software developers out there. We're just focusing on different problems at a higher level of abstraction. So we're just gonna get a higher level of abstraction and we're gonna focus on new problems. 30, 40 years ago, we really didn't have machine learning and artificial intelligence, and now we do. So we're just gonna focus on new things. So do I think you should experiment with no-code solutions? Absolutely. I recommend that you go experiment and play with some of the no-code tools I'm going to recommend in a minute and see how you can build a web application or a mobile application with them just to test out your idea. Is. Sometimes you might have a friend, family member, perhaps maybe you know someone who's a realtor and they need a particular, they have an idea that they want to build an application with. Try to use a no code solution to just validate that idea. That's going to allow you to save a ton of time and just allow you to get something in their hands so they can actually play with it to see if it's going to be useful rather than you spending months, weeks, months, half a year or more building an application that you have no idea if it's even going to validate whatever assumptions that they do have. All right, so what are some examples of the tools out there that are available in the no code area? So here are some no code tools that you can look into. Number one's gonna be Webflow. Webflow is a tool that's going to allow you to build web applications. It has a database component. You can kind of render things conditionally. It works very well. You can connect it with multiple other services. Works pretty well, you can do custom domains and so forth. It's also very similar in the way that it works as a no code solution to other site builders such as WordPress, Squarespace, Wix and a number of the other ones out there, which brings up a good point. WordPress is probably the original no code solution out there. When WordPress was announced, it was just a blog engine really. And then slowly it added the ability to have plugins and these plugins got really powerful. And in fact, I actually built the first version of my training platform, which was caster.io, which is now 
been shut down, which I ran for over six years. The first version I built on it was WordPress. The entire training platform was no code for a whole period of three and a half years. And most people don't realize that. The First year was 100% no code, meaning I didn't write a line of code. And in fact, that was the rule that I set for myself when I wanted to start the business. I thought I have this idea for a training business. I wonder if it's gonna work. And as a developer, the first thing I wanted to do was go write some code. But I told myself that's a distraction that doesn't prove anything about the business. I am not allowed to write any code until I validate the actual business idea. So that's what I did is I fired up the application and put it on WordPress. So it was just a WordPress site and I used a couple of plugins to allow charging and restrict the content of the videos that I was selling online. And I did that for a full year. After about a year, I had hired about three other instructors and then I needed to calculate certain royalties based upon viewing and watch time. So I did have to write a little bit of code in the back end that ran every night. More say so that was a little bit of low code because the WordPress site still ran the main platform for the next two and a half years after that. But every night I had a automated script that would run out and go check some stats and then just calculate some revenue. That's what ran my training business for over three and a half years years before I completely rewrote it in Rails to be a fully customizable solution. So those are gonna be the first big ones you're gonna to wanna to look at for just like the whole website building type of scenario. You're gonna look at Webflow, you're gonna look at WordPress, Squarespace, and Wix. Okay, so you got a website, but a lot of times you need to put data somewhere. So you need some type of database. Now, of course you could go find a database and write SQL and all that stuff, but we're talking no code here. So what are the biggest options out there? Again, there's a lot of options. So I'm not gonna name them all, but the two most popular in this realm are gonna be Google Sheets and Airtable. Both of them will allow you to integrate directly with them. They have APIs that you can call into and store data in rows and columns inside of that. You can put data inside of Sheets as well, which you can think of them as tables. Airtable is very popular, has a very powerful API. Sheets it's probably not so powerful, but you could still use it effectively. And I have, I did use it for a couple of years for a project, which I'll talk about in a moment. So check out Google Sheets and Airtable. When you're building applications, sometimes you need to accept user input. And you can do that, of course, with something like Gravity Forms, which is a plugin for WordPress that works very well. Or if you don't have a WordPress installation, perhaps you're running a static site, you can use something like Typeform. It allows you to quickly build forms. You can even integrate with tools like Stripe to provide payment details on the form that need to be submitted with the form. So if you need to sell something, you could have someone provide all the details that they need to provide and then provide the purchase price. They could plug in their credit card information. It integrates with Stripe. So the user will then be submitting their payment details and you'll get paid through Stripe. Again, not having to really write a single line of code. Now the payment one I already mentioned, that's Stripe. That's what I'm gonna recommend. Now, of course you can go with PayPal as well. However, I find Stripe to have the most level of integration simply because the way Stripe has been built, it has very powerful APIs that run things on the back end, so the integration points are phenomenal. So definitely check out Stripe if you're gonna build anything that requires payments with no code. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't mention this last one, which is probably the best and biggest one of them all. This is the integration elephant that I call it. That is Zapier. Zapier allows you to connect the internet, basically. If you wanna connect a Google Sheet with a Typeform form, which means as someone enters something on Typeform and they submit a payment, then a row gets entered on Google Sheets, you can do that. If you wanna get notified when a new row is entered into that Google Sheet and you want to have it send you a text message, you can do that. If you want to read from an RSS feed and then publish it to a Twitter feed, you can do that. If you can think of it, once something happens, I want something else to happen. Maybe it's someone's been added to an email list. I want to automatically add them to another database or I want to automatically put them in some type of other funnel over in a, another software that I use. Most likely Zapier can handle that. You do get a free, they're called Zaps which are the unit of measurement and of how you execute things inside of Zapier. I think you get about 10 zaps a month at the time of this recording for free. Highly recommend upgrading to a pro plan. I have no affiliation with them whatsoever. However, it is something I've used for years uh, and it's just probably one of the most useful things I've used. So check out Zapier, probably one of the best no code solutions out there. So lastly, let's just ask the question, does this stuff really work? Okay, we hear about no code, but who really uses no code? As I mentioned, I used no code for three and a half years to run my training platform. My training platform at one point was grossing over five figures a month on WordPress. So it's something that does work and will work for you. Again, you're gonna reach a point in which you need to do something customizable and it may not work for you at that point in time, but things like WordPress integrating with various plugins and Stripe, Gravity Forms, et cetera, and all of the access control plugins you can use give you a ton of flexibility. Another thing that I have done is I used Webflow, Typeform, Stripe, Google Sheets, Zapier, and 
a email service provider to send emails all integrated together. And that was what ran androidjobs.io for close to two and a half years. It was a 100% no code solution that generated over five figures a year. So it's nothing that's gonna make you rich by any means, but it's a nice side hustle income for you to create something. And that ran for two and a half years as a strictly no code solution. Again, my goal was not to write code that I had to maintain. My goal was to ship a business that provided value you and had economic benefit to myself. So that was for two and a half years. I've been now since moved it off onto another job board platform. Again, I didn't want to write the code. I didn't create the job platform. I'm using another job platform to do that for me. I liked it. It seemed a lot more stable. So that's why I went that direction. All right, let's talk about the cons of using no code. This is something I have experience with in the real world for both my training site and for Android jobs, which was bolted together from multiple different integrations. Here's the thing, things just start failing. An integration is gonna change, perhaps a network times out and the payment doesn't go through and something gets declined. You'll have a bunch of weird error scenarios. Eventually over time, you have something called bit rot and bit rot is where your code just kind of gets old. In this case, these integrations start breaking. The connections between them aren't working as well anymore. It's not the fact that the connection broke, it's just perhaps the parameters have changed. Things are being done underneath the hood that you're not aware of and things break. And then you have to hop back in and troubleshoot and figure out what's going on. And since you don't own that platform, a lot of times you have to relearn exactly what's going on end to end. And if you haven't touched it in six months or more, it can be very time consuming and frankly, very frustrating because something that was working all of a sudden breaks and you didn't touch a thing. So that's one of the biggest downfalls about no code. And of course, the other one is gonna be a Eventually you possibly are going to outgrow it. You're going to need features that are not available to you by bolting together all these integrations, or it's simply gonna turn into a huge spaghetti mess of integrations and you just wanna simplify it. So should you use a no-code solution? You should definitely use a no-code solution simply because it's gonna give you experience in that area and you're gonna know what's coming through the entire industry at the time. So play with it, build something with it, validate an idea with it. It's gonna work well for you. Now you're probably still gonna keep developing software in whatever language you're using. And if you're interested and learning the Kotlin programming language, I have a course that's available right here. Just click on that link. In that nine hour plus long course, I'll teach you Kotlin from the ground up. You don't need any prior existing knowledge or anything of that nature. I'll show you everything you need to know to get running with Kotlin. 100% free. Feel free to check it out when you have time. I hope that helps and I'll catch you in the next video.